And we celebrate you. And we love you. We are set. Ah, lift your two hands above your head. Put them together with a joyful shout. Let's receive our Papa, Dr. Amen Damina. Glory. Amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's pray together. Father, we rejoice that tonight we have this another opportunity to come before your precious holy written word. Thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit that lives on our inside. And thank you for the opportunity to learn, to grow, and to be equipped. So your word comes with clarity tonight. And we decree that by the end of this service, we'll all be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Well, it's 30 days of glory 2022. Glory. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We well, want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. All of the social media community, brothers and sisters online. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service tonight. Guys, it's going to be an exciting study in the word of his grace. Help us invite friends, share the video, tag somebody, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's get the word around the world. It's going to be a great time as we explore the riches of redemption. We also want to ask all of you that are connected to the service tonight by way of radio in Aquaibom, whichever station you're hearing the sound of my voice, call a friend, call a loved one, call a family member to connect to this service. It's going to be exciting. All our campuses around the world, we are so glad to welcome all of you to the service tonight. Brothers and sisters, citizens all over the world, we're going to have a great time as we study the word tonight. Can I have a powerful amen? Are we excited to fellowship in the word together? Can we give the Lord a great shout? Glory! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word of his grace. <clears throat> Glory to God. Amen. All right, we're still examining the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. You need to pay attention to the whole series. And if you have not been following, I will advise you to, to see to it that you get the, the previous materials so that you have complete understanding of these concepts we are unraveling from the word of God. It's so important. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Next verse. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen. Yea, amen means fulfilled. Unto the glory of God by us. Next verse. Now, he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Next verse. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. That means God's promises finds their fulfillment in Christ. We are not asked to fulfill God's promise. We are asked to receive God's promise. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 and 27. Let's look at one of those promises. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Next verse. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. I will, I will, I will. If you observe carefully, when you follow the things we've been teaching, we have said salvation it's, it's like, when did you get born again? Somebody says, when did you get born again? 
And then you said, I got born again on so-so and so date. You can also say, I received the spirit of God on so-so and so date. It's still the same thing. So receiving the spirit of God is salvation. Receiving the spirit of God is salvation. <clears throat> salvation is to receive the spirit of God. So now in Ezekiel 36, 26, we see God making a promise. Please pay attention. A promise is not a commandment. A promise is not a commandment. A promise is not a contract. A promise is not a contract. A promise is not a law. A promise is not a law. The promises of God are not contracts where you're supposed to fulfill your part in order for God to fulfill his own parts. Like we play our part, God will do his own. If you do this, God will do this. If you don't do this, God will not do this. That's not a promise. A promise is a commitment you gave to do something all by yourself. A commitment you gave to do something all by yourself. So when God makes a promise, it means he will do what he had said. That means he will fulfill what he says. Because a promise is not going to be fulfilled by you to whom the promise is made. When God makes a promise, the only part you play is to receive. You receive the promise of God. You didn't qualify or you didn't do something about the promise. Look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Next verse. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. The promise of the spirit is the spirit. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. So that promise of the spirit is the spirit. The promise is the spirit or the spirit is the promise. That shows us two characteristics. The spirit is explains the promise that's number one number two the promise explains the spirit number one the spirit explains the promise number two the promise explains the spirit what do i mean firstly what god promised is his spirit secondly the spirit is in us today by promise the spirit is in us today by promise. What God promised was the spirit. Today, the spirit is in us by promise. It's not a contract. You didn't have to do anything to have the Holy Ghost. You didn't have to pray about it. You didn't have to fast about it. God just had to send his son to die on the cross. And upon his resurrection, he shed forth his spirit. Upon his resurrection, he made the spirit available. So we don't have six steps to the spirit in the Bible. We don't have two keys to receiving the spirit in the Bible. We have the promise of the spirit through faith. The promise of the spirit through faith. The word faith is the faith of the son of God. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Nevertheless I live. But Christ liveth in me. Yet not I. Is not in the original. Nevertheless I live. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live. In the flesh. I live by the faith of the son of God. Who loved me. And gave himself for me yet not i is not in the original so i have been it's not i am crucified in the original is i have been crucified with christ 
Nevertheless, I live, but Christ liveth in me. So we have the spirit of God by promise. Notice what Ezekiel said again in Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 verse number 26. Mm -mm. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Next verse. And I will put my spirit. I, I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statues. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Let's see something. Please pay attention. You see, your life always turns out to the level of your perception. Your life always turns out to the level of your perception. If you have a camera phone, and most phones today have cameras, it's very difficult to find a phone that doesn't have camera anymore. I remember when the, the, the Nokia technology came into Nigeria, little, little Nokia phones, it was a miracle to see a Nokia phone. But today, a Nokia phone can be embarrassing in the light of all these heavy, heavy phones that are flying all over the place. Is it not true? You know, so everybody has a phone that has a camera. And you know, it has become so in, you know, intriguing that even if an accident happens, instead of people rushing to help the victims, they are making videos or snapping pictures. You know what I mean? All right, so you have the camera phone and every one of you has a camera phone. Now, you cannot get an image with your camera phone that you didn't focus on. If you want to snap a picture, you've got to focus. If you don't focus, you can't get the image. You cannot get an image with your camera, the image that you never focused on. What you focus the camera on is what you will see. So instead of snapping Pastor Daddy Ken, if you keep the camera on Pastor Matthew and you assume that it's Pastor Daddy Ken you are snapping because the focus is on Pastor, Pastor Matthew, even if, you, if your eyes are on Pastor Daddy Ken, the picture that you will have is whose? Pastor Matthew. All right, so wherever the camera is focused on is the image that you will produce. If you fail to see who you are in Christ and appreciate it, the kind of result you will get will be the result based on the things you are thinking about. If you fail to see who you are in Christ and appreciate it, the kind of results you will get will be the results that are based on the things you are thinking on or looking at, the things you are focusing on. Imagine if you fed your mind every day thinking that you have a problem with sin. And your mind focuses on sin. And that is all you are thinking about. You will be producing struggles with sin. Because as long as your mind is focused on sin, there is no way you will overcome. Because the image you are seeing is sin. So what you will be producing is struggle with sin. Please pay attention. If you will feed your mind on who you are in Christ, Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging. The acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. You need to focus on who you are in Christ. You need to focus. You need to put your mind steadily on who you are in Christ. If a king gives birth to a boy, I'm talking about proper kings now because there are some kings that their kingdom is very poor. Okay? There are some kings, their kingdom is a poverty stricken kingdom. Okay? But they are kings. Okay? But I'm talking about kings that are very rich, like kings in the Middle East. Okay? So let's say a king in the Middle East. His wife gives birth to a baby. But mistakenly, they brought the baby to Nigeria and handed the baby to a poor family. 
The baby grows in that family and begins to struggle with what will we eat? What will we wear? And gets used to struggling to get food, struggling to wear clothes. That baby grows up to accept those conditions as his own conditions. He doesn't think any longer beyond the conditions he has found himself. So he starts struggling. He joined the struggle market. He's struggling to make sure that what his family is going through does not replicate in his own life. Now, this boy was born in royalty. But somehow, somehow, he grew up in a poverty-stricken family. And all his life, nobody ever told him that he is the, the apparent heir to a, a kingdom in the Middle East. His conduct will always be a result of what he sees in his immediate environment. He will keep saying, I wish I have money. I wish I can do this. I wish I can do that. The problem with the boy is, he doesn't know who he is. I wish he knew who he was. If you knew who you were, you will find out that your problem will never be wealth if you are the son of that king. Are we teaching? So if you focus on who you are in Christ, you discover that you don't lack the ability to do right. If you focus on who you are in Christ, you will discover that you do not lack the ability to do right. That the ability to do right has always been with you. Glory to God. Say with me, I am what the word says I am. All right, I know you're writing, but I like to hear it very loud. And I want the radio and the TV audience to hear our voices. I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. Now you keep saying that by faith. And as a Christian, as a child of God, we walk by faith. We speak things by faith. We declare who we are by faith. Say with me, by faith, I declare I am what the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. Now yesterday we kept teaching and we stopped at. I like to read that scripture we read yesterday before I proceed. Second Peter chapter 1 verse number 4. <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 1 verse number 4. Whereby I given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these. Ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Next verse. And beside knowing that you are a partaker of the divine nature, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Next verse. And to knowledge temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. Next verse. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Next verse. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. But he that lacketh these things is blind. He that fails to acknowledge. Lacketh means you are lagging behind. You fail to acknowledge these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wow. <clears throat> so which means if I feed on the word of God. The word of God will influence my habits. 
If I feed on the word of God, the word of God will influence my habits. Very important. <clears throat> the word of God is working in the believer. The word of God is working in the believer. So if a believer is struggling with bad habits, can demons be involved? Well, demons only get involved by the permission of the believer. By the permission. And they are not going to be involved in the sense of possessing him. They are going to be involved in the sense of oppression or depression. It's going to be external influence by the permission of the believer. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. So the devil cannot bulldoze his way around a believer until the believer gives permission. The devil cannot just move on a believer and begin to harass a believer until the believer gives permission. Neither give place to the devil. In other words, if I consistently yield to the works of the flesh, I am giving place to the devil. If I consistently yield to the works of the flesh, I am giving place to the devil. That's something about habits that keeps going on and on and on and on without being corrected. They can eventually open a door of oppression or a door of depression or a door of constant satanic attacks on the believer. Sometimes it looks like you can't control it anymore. Oh no, but that's not true. No matter how it looks. You can still control it because in you is the ability. In you is the ability. You just need to starve that bad habit. Something is feeding that habit. Starve it. Then change the habit and give yourself time in the world. Change the habit and give yourself time in prayer. Change the habit. Look for responsible brethren who are living in victory and stay in their company. Stay in their company. Always know that all the answers you need in life are in the word of God. All the answers you need in life are in the word of God. If you can stay long enough in the world, you come out victorious. Sometimes the habit will not stop overnight because it took you time to cultivate. But there is no believer that cannot handle sin like an expert. There is no believer that cannot handle sin like an expert. Every believer is a trained expert in handling sinful habits. Every believer is a trained expert in handling sinful habits. The only thing is if we refuse to act on the word of God. If we refuse to act on the word of God. Feed on the word. Then look at those instructions. Walk in them. As your nature. Look at the instructions. Feed on the word. And then you find out that sinful habits submit themselves cheaply to your expertise. Say with me very loud everybody, sin has no dominion over me. Can I hear you shout it very loud like you know what you're talking about? Someone told me, when I am getting short fused, I just take a walk and I pray in the spirit. When I'm getting short fused, maybe we're engaging in a discourse and I find out I'm about to lose it. He said, I just say, excuse me, give me a few minutes. I take a walk. I walk away from the discourse. I pray in tongues for a while. Then I come back to the discourse again. So now we are done lose control. That way I'm still in control. That way, you know, anger doesn't get a better part of me. No, 
I take permission, I take a walk and I pray in the spirit. The point is, at that temptation point is when you need to act on the word. The moment that temptation shows up, that is when to walk in the spirit. That is when to act on the word. That is when to strike. And don't forget this. You cannot resist sin without being full of the word. Only a man that is full of the word resists sin. So that's why you've got to give yourself to the word. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Day and night. You stay in the word day and night. You meditate on it. You listen to it. That's your lifeline, the word of God. You pay attention to the word. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from your heart. Keep them in your eyes. For they are life to those that find them. And hell to all their flesh. Glory to God. Act on the word. You have anger problems, don't go to anger management classes. There was a guy, a secular guy called Chris Brown. I think he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an artist or something. Huh? He's a musician. Okay, Chris Brown. He went for anger management and then when he came out of the anger management classes, he, he almost killed somebody. The thing just, the thing just showed that there is nothing the classes can do to subdue that anger. It's not anger management classes. It's like some people who say, well, we're having marital problems. Let's go for counseling. Those counseling is not what solves marital problems. No. Counseling by unbelievers, by experts, experts trying to counsel men of the spirit, now that's not to say it's a bad thing, but I'm showing you a more excellent way. No common sense can deal with sin. No common sense can deal with sin. Because sin is spiritual. No common sense can deal with sin. Because sin is spiritual. You need to have spiritual information and take a hold of the word of God and act on it. Take a hold on the word of God and act on it. If we can take heed to the instructions of the word, we will live right. Oh yes. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Are you still here? Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit... Remember what we, we, we established in the course of teaching this. But the fruit of a son of God. The fruit of the man that is born of God. The fruit of the believer has love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Next verse, next verse. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law what we call the fruit of the spirit or the characteristics of believers actually is to act on the word what we call the fruit of the spirit or the characteristics of the believer is acting on the word of god remember we said self-control temperance we looked at love then we looked at self-control and the key to self-control is the word. The word self-control in the Greek means to govern yourself. To govern yourself. To govern yourself, that means you never let anything rule you but yourself. You never let anything rule you but yourself. You have authority over your thoughts. You have authority over your words. You have authority over your legs. You have authority over your body. You have authority over your eyes. Someone is playing music I shouldn't listen to. 
I do not sit there binding and casting. I simply exercise authority over my legs and my ears. How do I exercise authority over my legs? I walk away. And by walking away, I'm exercising authority over my ears because the further I go away, the more I lose hearing what that music is saying. You don't just sit down and be saying, I bind that music. Let the stereo spoil. Nepa, take light. It's not everywhere there is Nepa. In America, there's no Nepa. So your prayer will not make them take light. The music will keep playing. But it's a simple way to exercise authority over that music. By exercising authority over your legs and over your ears. Teaching good? <clears throat> I just walk away. Fred Price mentioned a lady who always comes to his office with a suggestive look. And then she finally came almost not dressed. He said immediately he saw her walk in almost not dressed. He started telling himself, Fred, you are dead. Fred, you are dead. Fred, you are dead. Then she started coming close. He took off. And as he took off, passed through the secretary's office. The secretary said, Pastor, where are you running to? He said, I'm trying to come alive. I'm trying to come alive. Because in that office, I am dead. But now, I'm trying to come alive. <laughs> Casey Price. <laughs> you know, Apostle Casey Price. He said, I'm trying to come alive. That's self-control. That's self-control. If you're doing the word, you will flee. Flee means run away. Don't say me, I'm a child of God. I'm born of God. I cannot run away. <laughs> the Bible tells you that walking in the spirit is to flee. Another thing is the Bible says, stay away from those who teach false doctrine. When you see a minister who is preaching for money, don't even try to see what he is saying so that you can see. Just stay away from him. Simple. Off his TV channel, shut down his radio broadcast, delete, don't go to his page. Romans 16, 17. Romans chapter 16, verse number 17. <clears throat> Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Simply avoid them. Anybody causing division, don't try to change him. Avoid him. You find a brother in a department who always complains about the leader avoid that brother all of you avoid him let him know that he's carrying something that doesn't look like him avoid him don't entertain him don't entertain him don't try to encourage him he is already in sin avoid him the rebellion shall dwell in dry ground anybody rebelling against authority is already moving into a dry atmosphere When you stay away from a brother that causes division, you're walking in the spirit. When you stay with a brother that is causing division, you're walking in the flesh. You reap corruption. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 4. 1 mm -mm. Timothy chapter 6 verse number 4. Alright, give me from verse number 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words... What are wholesome words? Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Next verse. He is proud. Knowing nothing. Huh? 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 He is proud. Knowing nothing. A preacher that cannot unveil Christ from the scriptures but can teach you keys to success. Can teach you steps to prosperity. But cannot bring Christ out of the scriptures. He is proud. Knowing nothing. Is there in your Bible? But doting about 
questions and strifes of words, whereof commit envy, strife, railings, in evil surmisings. Next verse. Watch this. Watch this. Next verse. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. They are destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Any doctrine that is centered on gain as godliness. Any teaching that says that your closeness to God is dependent on your material testimonies. That gain is godliness. Any teaching that makes you feel defeated as a believer unless you have car, house, money, contract. Any teaching that makes you feel that your true worth in God is defined by a private jet or a commercial jet from such withdraw yourself. From such withdraw yourself. Teaching good? From such do what? Withdraw yourself. Look at the next verse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment. That is our view of God in Christ. Yusubia is our contentment. It's not like godliness and content. Are two things. That is our godliness is our contentment. We see God in Christ. We are contented. Ooh. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Next verse. For, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain. We can carry nothing out. Next verse. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Teaching good tonight. Now, the money gospel. Stay away from the money gospel. Stay away from it. Something else, Brother Peter spoke about to help us walk in the spirit. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Pay attention. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may, he may devour. He's not going around devouring everybody. He's going around or about seeking whom. Look at that word, be sober. Underline, be sober. Underline, be vigilant. In the Greek, the word be sober means be calm. Be calm. And it's closer to that word, be conservative. Be calm. Be conservative. When we got born again, sisters don't shake brothers, brothers don't shake sisters. That's how conservative it was. From afar we wave. Bless you sister. Bless you bros. Men sat on one side. Women sat on another side. No mixture. That's how conservative it got. The word there is be sober. The opposite of being drunk. When a man is drunk he's not sober. When a man is sober he's not drunk. Historically, that is taking nothing that influences your conduct. Be sober. Don't take anything that influences your conduct. That word be sober also deals with having clear judgment. Clear judgment. That is, nothing is influencing you. You are in control. I also found out that the opposite of that word sober in the Greek is excitement. You know, church people like too much excitement. But he says be sober. Be sober. Be calming down. In today's English. 
Be calming down. Huh? Huh? Be calming down. The opposite of that word sober was used in Galatians 5.19. Is the word lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is the opposite of be sober. It simply means, lasciviousness simply means to be sensual. That word lasciviousness was used to describe naked women who use their physical bodies to attract others. Those women are lascivious. I mean, who expose their bodies in the name of fashion. That's the word lascivious. In Galatians 5.19. And brother Paul calls that a work of the flesh. That word lasciviousness was used many times. It was used in the Greek language for women who dress without control. Lascivious. When you study the history of some fashion by certain creators, they say they designed some of those fashion intentionally to sexually arouse people. They focus on a woman's opening her cleavage, a woman wearing body hugging clothes, where to even express the liberty of the spirit is impossible. No freedom. Meanwhile, where the spirit of the Lord is. But the cloth is too tight that the liberty of the spirit is choking. I know I'm teaching good today. They call them slave queens. In today's language. <laughs> or brothers wearing tight pants very suggestive clothes they wear body hugging shirts to show their muscles so they can mesmerize ladies lascivious We are teaching you to walk in the spirit. <laughs> because I saw the way somebody is looking at me like this. I'm sure this man is like, is this power city or where am I? <laughs> you are hearing gospel, my brother. The word lascivious is the opposite of ex. I mean, is a word for excess. It means excess. Lascivious, something that is excessive. is the very opposite of control. I mean, I like women to be very fashionable. I have four of them in my house. And they are fashionable ladies. Yeah. I like women looking very good. It's called the beauty of holiness. Not the uglification of holiness. Bible says, whatever you do in word and in deed, do it to the glory of God. So when you dress up and you look at the mirror, say, Jesus, this is for your glory. Look at it again. There are things you shouldn't watch. I've told you that. Things that are sex, nudity, and language. It simply means that in those movies, they will pass across thoughts to you that will teach you sex. That's why they warned you ahead of time. Nudity means nakedness and strong language, which sometimes means lewd language. As a believer, you don't need to be told to change the channel. Let's change it. Because lack of controlling what you watch is lasciviousness. Once there's no control, you're in lasciviousness. And Satan wants to attack our visuals. Society says that porn, pornographic, pornographic sites 
have almost double viewing than all other sites in the world. No believer can survive when his visuals cannot be controlled. No believer can survive when his visuals cannot be controlled. You need to change how you watch things and what you watch. What's lasciviousness? Lasciviousness means no control. It's excess. In your office, there must be control. In your school, there must be control. In your home, there must be control. Lasciviousness is when you cannot control what you see, you cannot control what you hear, you cannot control what you wear. Sometimes you need to just put yourself on the check and just stay in the spirit. Somebody says, can I know a believer by his dressing? Yes. Yes. Yes, oh yes. Oh yes. You know, I come out of the aircraft and I walk into airports and people who don't know me are calling me pastor. Man of God. Man of God. It's not that they know me before. They know that the way I appear, only men of God appear like that. <laughs> man of God. Man of God. Godfather. <laughs> I have a taxi. You want a drop? Godfather, you need trolley because of the way I appeared. If I'd appeared in a jean and a t-shirt, they won't call him the man of God. They'll just say, S -s -s, you need a car. But when I appear like this, Father in the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so which means your dressing defines who you are. How do I know he's a believer? His dressing is conservative. There's no looseness. Okay, let me ask you. Can you know a harlot by her dressing? Huh? Yes. What's the dressing of a harlot? Proverbs 7 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. So you wouldn't think we're just talking. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. That's a simpleton. A guy who did not have discernment. So he met a woman that had the attire of an harlot. And what follows the attire of a harlot is a subt and subtle of heart. The subtlety in a harlot. And harlot here can be a brother and can be a sister. Next verse. Put it up. I've not finished. Where you run into? She is loud and stubborn. That's the first thing in the dressing of a harlot. When you see a sister that is too loud, very stubborn, you tell her, sit down here, and I sit down. Mm. She is loud and stubborn, or a brother that is very, very forward. Put it up. Her feet abide not in her house. He is never at home. Waka waka. Waka waka. When you come to say, ah, it, 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 it's happening there. I say, we'll never see her for three days now. <laughs> Up and come out three days ago, he never come back. Are you enjoying the word? <laughs> it's fruit of the spirit. <laughs> Next verse. Now is she without, now in the street, and lieth in wait at every corner. Corner, corner business. <laughs> Next verse. <laughs> Next verse. So she caught him and kissed him forward. She's too forward. And with an impudent face said unto him. Next verse. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vow. That is, having captured you, I have paid my vow. That is, I vow that I will capture you. Now that I have captured you, 
I have paid my vows. That means you have been a, a project on the satanic radar. And I am the one signed, sent to carry it out. You don't have to dress like a fool to be beautiful. Oh, you see, brothers, we are in sagging trousers. Sagging trousers have belt finish in the market. If belt are finished, buy robe. Buy robe and tie. Why are you sagging your bum bum? When you enter the toilet, you close the door. Because you were exposing your bum bum. Now you come out of the toilet, then you now expose the bum bum that you close inside the toilet. Where did they come with the sagging of trousers from? Prisons in America. They do not allow you to go to prison with a belt so you don't hurt people and hurt yourself. So since they don't have belts, they sag trousers in prison. And then fashion people decided to produce them so that the prison ex-prisoners will wear them in memory. So anyone you see with a sag trouser is an ex-convict. <laughs> Glory! That word is also the word indecent. It's indecent. Or, Bible also uses a word like jokes that are not convenient. Indecent. Or you break jokes that are not convenient. Jokes that make people to be shifting in discomfort. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, brother Paul said that it was a sin. Not even to be mentioned among the Gentiles. So there are some sins that even unbelievers will say, Habba. Say with me, I have self-control. Shout it very loud. Shout it very loud. In the same dressing. The world thrives in lasciviousness. The world system. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 19. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. To walk all uncleanness with greediness. Jude chapter 1 verse 4. Jude chapter 1 verse 4. And Jude. Jude not judges. Jude. J-U-D-E. Is in the New Testament close to Revelation. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the holy Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the kind of music before you listen to it. Videos of naked women, all their bum bum shaking all over the place. You switch the channel. Change the channel. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart. Protect your heart with all diligence. And how do you protect your heart? You protect your eyes, you protect your ears, you protect your mouth. Those are the gates into your heart. For out of it are the issues of life. Be sober. You cannot afford to have an indiscreet friend. And then having such a friend, you now say you are sober. No, you are not sober. If you observe in the Bible, the word sex is mentioned discreetly. Every time they mention in the Bible, they mention it with discretion. The way the Bible uses that word sex is so discreet that you have to pay attention to know what they are talking about. We need to do the word. Cleanse our ears. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 where we're examining the word sober also said be vigilant. Be sober. Be vigilant. The word vigilant is the Greek word. Is the Greek word Gregorio. Gregorio in the Greek. Pay attention. 
It means be on the alert. Don't lose your focus. Be on the alert. Don't lose your focus. Be aware. Be on the alert. Don't lose your focus. Be aware. Actually, the word vigilant is used for soldiers sent to war. When a soldier goes to war, he has to be vigilant. You have to be vigilant because there's an enemy out there. So you need to be looking around. Don't lose your concentration on the battlefield. Be on the alert. Constant. Say with me very loud, I will be sober. I will be vigilant. You know, Jesus said, watch and pray. Brother Paul said, watching their own too with prayer. Watch and pray. Be vigilant. Some things don't need prayer. They just need running away. Listen carefully. There's nothing wrong in a believer living a consecrated life. That is how it ought to be. That's the Christian culture. A consecrated life means set apart. In fact, sometimes when you're so consecrated to God, people will call you a fanatic. Oh well, so be it. Bible says in Acts chapter 5, they couldn't join themselves with them. Brother Kenneth Hagin said, three things in the spirit of this world. There are three things in the spirit of this world. Number one, lightness lightness things are just light nothing is considered irreverential they make light of sin they make light of sex they make light of murder they make light of lying lightness number two looseness lack of control you just lose control we live in such crazy times where women now buy additional bomb bomb. Additional bomb bomb. They buy additional breast. And sometimes the dressing goes wrong. You will see the bomb bomb miss the original bomb bomb. So you will see four bomb bombs. One, two, three, four. It's not every time you will get it right if it is artificial. There will be mistakes. Those that don't want to do additional, they go for plastic surgery where they will carry additional mass of flesh and attach. Some lose their life in that process. How far? <laughs> eh? We should go on. Yeah. Or we should close. Yeah. You are the guys, man. Looseness, lack of self control, loose speaking. That is, you can say anything. And then people around will be saying, You are a very bold man. They are calling you bold, stupid boy. And you are talking in here. And they say, the boy is very bold. He can say anything. They are fertilizing your stupidity. And they are making you a global fool. You think you are bold. When the Bible says be sober, you, you are being arrogant. The third one is, he says, that a lot of people in the last days will be into all kinds of busy bodies. 2 Thessalonians 3, 11. Gist carriers. 2 Thessalonians 3, 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busy bodies. They are what? So when you hear busy body, it's from the Bible. They are busy bodies. Next verse. 
Now, them that are such, we command and exhort you by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they walk and eat their own bread. Next verse. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary where? In well-doing. Give me verse 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Next verse, 15. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Most of the times when the Bible talks about busy bodies, it refers to women. Most times. Not always. So. There are times busy bodies are also men. But most times are women. Busy bodies. So women be very careful. Tail bearers. When you see three women gather. Lord have mercy. First Timothy 5 13. I'm almost cl closing. Teaching good? And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tatlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Idle. At last, no self-control. As a believer who is born of God, you have control over your thoughts, you have control over your words. All these nine things called the fruit of the spirit, they are for our conduct with men. The beneficiaries of the fruit of the spirit in our lives are people around us. So the fruit of the spirit helps us in relating with brethren and relating with humans. Which means that self-control is about your relationships or your dealings with men. So self-control means you are sober. Be sober, be calming down. Self-control means you are vigilant. Hebrews 12, 14, as a round off. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, it says, Hebrews, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with people. The word peace and the word holiness here has to do with our relationship with men. Follow peace and holiness with men, without which the man cannot see God in your life. It's not that we will not see God. No, well, well, we already have Jesus in our hearts. But the men around us will only see God in us when we follow them with peace and with holiness. Peace means harmony. It means absence of war, absence of bitterness, absence of strife. Holiness means our separation in this world, being set apart. We are being called unto holiness. We are being called unto holiness. We are sanctified and separated. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. The Bible says he calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's holiness. It shows us to be a fruit. Look at the way Peter will put it in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Next verse. But as he which had called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of conversation. Next verse. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. 
holy in all your manner of conversation. Why? You are a chosen generation. You are a holy nation. You are peculiar people. So, follow peace and holiness without which no man can see the Lord. There are people in your neighborhood where you are always fighting. And they know that you are supposed to be a man of God. Is it not about time you stop fighting and apologize to your neighbors? He said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. He's saying our holiness is for men to see the Lord in us. Holiness makes men see God in us. When we live in our holiness, in our separation, you're not a weird person. That's exactly who you are. When men see me walk in the spirit, they are seeing Jesus being glorified. So let your light so shine before me. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men. Amen. Amen. Say with me very loud, I walk in the spirit. Say it very loud, I walk in the spirit. I shine my light before men. I live a life that makes men see Christ in me. That's my reality. I'm born of God. I do the word. I believe the word. I act the word. Stand on your feet. Let's say it again. I do the word. I believe the word. I act on the word. I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. Turn to your neighbor. Say to your neighbor, be vigilant. Be sober. Because there's an adversary there. Amen. Bless the night. Yeah. Be sober, be vigilant. There's an adversary who goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. He's not seeking everybody. He's only seeking those that are not sober and those that are not vigilant. Praise God. I say praise God. The remaining days of your life, you will live in victory. Oh yes, you will live in victory. Say with me very loud, the remaining days of my life, I will live in total victory. I walk in the spirit. I walk in the spirit. I walk in the spirit. I'm born of God. The life of God flows through me. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. And we ask that this revelation keeps growing big on our inside. Growing big on our inside. And I decree that everyone here that hears this word, revelation knowledge like never before floods your mind. In the name of Jesus, barriers terminated. Holes are broken. In the name of Jesus, thank you for these realities that define us in a world that is crooked. And we thank you for grace and abilities and enablements that are ours in Christ. We give you praise. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Amen. Well, go ahead. Let's celebrate this good word tonight. No, no, no. That's not the way we celebrate the word in this house. <laughs> Glory! Whoa! Are you blessed tonight? Whoa! We're about to take our honor offerings tonight. So grab your offerings. Let's give in honor of Christ. And I'll join Mr. Michael Bush in three minutes for Ask the Council on us. So grab your offerings tonight. Online, the banking details are scrolling. Television, the banking details are scrolling. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will read the bank accounts for you. But I'm so glad tonight to still have with us right here in the house. Pastor Daddy Ken is still with us. We love you, man. Good to have you here. Pastor Henry Chuk showed up today. Bless you. Good to see you. And Reverend Annie, Church of God Mission. We love you, man. Glad to see you here. And Pastor 
Paul, yes. Pastor Paul is also here. And Pastor Mrs. Enoch Buba Aji is also here with us. We love all of you. What a joy to have you. And Bishop, 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 Bishop Isaac is also with us from Total Gospel. Glory to God. Pastor Matthew is still with us too. I mean, all of you are still with us. So go ahead and just celebrate everybody in this building. Too. Glory! Glory! Grab your offerings, lift them up in honor of Christ tonight. Father, we give in faith, we give with joy, and we thank you for the privilege of learning and growing and enjoying the fragrance of your word. And as we give tonight, we are so elated in our hearts for the opportunity given to us that through our givings, your word keeps going across the nations of the earth. Through our givings, your word continues to cause men who are born of you to walk in their realities. So we give you praise. In Jesus precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. You don't want to go away on any platform. Because we didn't ask the council in another two, three minutes. But just before we hook up with you and ask the council. Or anywhere on the pulpit drop your offerings. Hit the music. Let's do it as we worship Christ. The risen Lord. Praise Counselor is about to take off. Just make sure you tighten your seatbelt.
Account name remains Power City International. There are two banks, as usual. We start at the very top on this edition of the program. Zenith, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. And that's for Zenith. Account name, still Power City International. It's the same for UBA, 139, 26, 465. 139, 26, 465. I don't know, but we can still at least a five-minute uh, window for phone calls. So plus two, three, four, if you're calling from outside Nigeria, otherwise simply 0806 800 9939, or you want to send an SMS or two, plus two, three, four, again, if you're SMSing from outside the country of Nigeria. Otherwise, it's 0703 691 8642, or you send an email or two to ask the counselor now at Gmail. Dot com for sponsorship, for partnership, and for support, just with a view to making sure this hot program remains hot on air. Just avail yourself of the program hotline. Plus two, three, four. Again, if you are dialing from outside Nigeria, otherwise, 0803 275 6104, or you email Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. Dell, of course, is. GR. My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor IJ Quere. We have a fantastic crop of young people backing us up as a production team. Okay, they didn't clap. Um, that's what we get every time. But the main man is on, and all the applause should go to him. Global Baba, our father, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental Mr. Bush. Global Baba. So good to have you so here. So nice evening. to see you. Whoa, I tell you, I'm excited. Global Baba always. The Intercontinental. <laughs> Global Baba. Yes. Baba, you want us to do this program, right? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Global Baba. The way you're coming, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Global, let's just pray and Let, take off. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for Kwai Bomb State. Right. Thank you for the rest of the world. We agree in faith that the devil will not run over our nation and will not run over our cities. Amen. We put an end to his maneuvers in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we decree that our cities and our nation continues to be conducive, continues to have peace so that the gospel continues to thrive, so that men come to the knowledge of the truth, so that disciples are raised all over the world. And we decree that in the name of Jesus, ministers of the gospel are steered up in all continents to preach this gospel like never before. Amen. And we give you praise for answered prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Move about that, that uh, prayer um, about the enemy running over our city just agrees with something we're doing. I'm just coming from a live radio studio, one of our programs, Michael Bush PLC. And on it, we are playing another one, another of our programs, Global Baba, that I know you like, um, 20 Questions. And on that, we are talking about Aquaibum Forest. Global Baba, I, I don't know whether it's um, pertinent for you to also join your voice. The time has come for the authorities, whether it's the governor, whether it's the local government chairman, um, just about anybody, commissioners, everybody, paramount ruler, clan heads, village heads. This is the time to start paying attention to the Aquaibum Forest. Looks like we have some strange um, people uh, uh, hiding in our forests and um, just waiting for God knows when. In the forest? Yes. What are they doing in the forest? They're just waiting. Um, where, where, Global, but where does um, all the bad, bad uh, things, or where do all the bad things come from, all the bad people? They come from the forest. And not quite from forest because we're not, and Global, but I am led to say this. I think the, the time has come. The, everyone in power, everyone who can do something about it, pay attention to our forest. Too many people. I agree with you. Yes. I agree with yes. you. Yes. I and mean, we have such a big forest. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. That's the responsibility of government. Yes. That's the number one responsibility of government. So, yeah. Pay attention to our forest. They should. Yes. They should. Because um, mm -hmm. many people are hiding in our forest, Lobo Baba. Uh, many people, I'm telling you. Father, we expose them. Amen. All those hiding in the forest. Amen. We expose them. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we, we create circumstances and situations supernaturally that exposes them from the forest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Global Baba, thank you. Okay, so we set up. We spent last night in River State, next door River State. So we're going to take some three anonymous entries as we hit the road. This one, greetings, sirs. Thank you so much, Global Baba and the Intercontinental Mr. Bush. Daddy, please help answer my question from Revelation. One seven. 
Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall walk because of him. Even so, amen. So I don't understand what it means by all eyes shall see him, and they also which pierced him. So how is it going to happen? Help me explain. Thank you, sir. I'm blessed for having you. Well, it's going to happen at the resurrection, resurrection of the dead. Both those who died and those who are alive, all of us will see him. Well, but that's all. Yep. Global Baba. Then the continue. Okay, still from Potakot, um, River State. Hello, Global Baba. Please kindly explain how New Jerusalem streets of gold fits into your teaching. Will there be a new heaven and new earth, literally, or is it, is it just figurative? How do we get to understand when to take things literal and when not to? I understand you try to explain this by collaboration of scriptures. Some teach that, uh, that we take everything in the Bible as literal. Thank you, sir. Yours in Christ. Anonymous. Well, you, you don't take everything in the Bible as, an, as, as literal because there are many things that are not literal. There are many things that are literal. So that's why scripture explains scripture. Again, in the book of Revelation, I don't like talking about Revelation except I'm teaching it properly. Otherwise, I don't like giving sound bites to the book of Revelation because it's a book that is heavily saturated with, 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 with figures of speech, which requires a lot of exegesis to bring explanation. Okay, one last anonymous entry from Patako River State, then we make progress. Hello, Global Baba. A million thanks for answers to all the questions I've been asking you in the spirit. I love you. I love mommy, and I also love the Triple J Plus ladies. Please pray for me. I have complicated health issues. It's so serious. Noble. Noble will pray for you at the end of the broadcast. And from River State, let's come back quickly, quickly, to, or by route to Akwaibum State, of course, on route Eket. Hello, Global Baba. My name is Gift Ofort. I live in Eket. Please, sir, there is this man who came. I thought we had already taken this one, so let me hit to you now. With you, hello, Global Baba. Thank you, Daddy, for the good work you do. And you too, Mr. Bush. May you continue to remain fresh every day in the word. Amen. Please, my text is a bit lengthy, Global Baba, but um, please bear with me because I am pained. I'm a member of blah, 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 blah church. He gives the name of a church, not our own, so we leave that out. I was converted to Power City International by my husband. At first, I was not comfortable with your teaching, but as I carefully followed you, I began to enjoy the truth. But, Father, there is a problem, a big problem. My husband made me run in my business and decided to join, so we do together. I asked him, why not go for your own line of business? He brought out so many reasons. Uh, he wanted to join, and it's, uh, they sounded good. I said, okay, but when I got pregnant, things changed completely, Global Baba. He hijacked the business from me. I no longer know where the money goes and comes. I beg before I get anything, Global Baba. I have become a stranger in my own business. Even after delivery, nothing changed. I suggested family planning. He said, no. After two years, I became pregnant again, Global Baba. When I told him, he said, I should go and look for the father of my child because he is not the one. After a month, he sat me down and told me that the business is down and out because there is no more money. He now stays in his mom's apartment. He does the cooking there. He washes plates. He eats while I'm here starving with pregnancy. It's like I'm carrying a plague father. He has stopped coming to church right now. I have another business idea, but no capital. Advise me, Daddy, because I'm totally broken. She leaves her full name, you know, but I'm going to spare her that um, detail. Wow. Well, this story is really serious. I, I think you will need to speak to your pastor about it because there are a number of things your pastor will ask you, and uh, your pastor will give you counsel based on the understanding he has of your husband. You know, he'll be able to advise you properly. Uh, sometimes when it comes to these kind of issues, I also like to hear your husband's side hear your side, and based on your two stories, I will know how to give you counsel. But right now, all we have is your side of the story, and we don't even have all the details that we require. So my advice is, see your pastor, but where you cannot see your pastor, or your pastor is no more within reach, you can still send us a mail, and I can get somebody in the church, one of our pastors, to counsel with you, pray with you, and find a way to help you. But who is a pastor? I don't know who the pastor is. It could be you, Global Baba. Well, if it is me, then she needs to talk to me. Okay. Whoever the pastor is. Global Baba. They're in the continent. Okay, we're making progress now. <laughs> okay, so um, where, where else now? Anonymous, um, just as we leave um, Uyo, I'm sure we're heading out of Uyo in a moment. Okay, this one. Uh, dear Global Baba, do you have anything that God would not forgive? 
thought you answered this. Um, the only sin that God does not forgive is the rejection of Jesus. Outside of that, God forgives all sins. He has already forgiven all sin in Christ. Okay, Global Bible, we are still back in uh, Aiken. As we make to leave Akwaibom, this one. Hello, Global Baba. I'm Basi Eka. I'm texting from Aiken, Akwaibom State. Global Baba, you are such a blessing to the body of Christ. I pray for more insight in Jesus' name. Daddy, I have two quick questions. Number one, how can a believer provoke or stir up the spirit of Christ in him? Provoke or stir up? Okay, we're talking about gifts of the spirit now. Well, in stirring up the gifts of the spirit, you stir it up by, number one, you pray in the spirit. You pray in tongues. Spend time to pray in tongues. Number two, by impartation. Impartation. Your spiritual father lays hands on you and stirs up that which is on your inside. Okay, so uh, producer, we can allow a couple of calls uh, within five, um, the five-minute window, even as I get back to Aked, to round off with this one. Global Baba, can the Holy Spirit be taken away from a believer who works after the flesh because Revelation 2, 5, King James Version, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Keywords, I will remove thy candlestick out of its place. Does the candlestick signify the spirit? Please, sir, I need more explanation. Thank you, Daddy. Well, he was talking to the church, not to an individual. The Holy Spirit never leaves you. But he was addressing seven churches in Asia Minor. And he says to the angel of the church, and he says, if the angel of the church does not put things in order as it refers to false doctrine, the candle of that church will be removed. That means that church will no more be in existence. Almost all, if not all the seven churches, you know, all of them are no more in existence today. So to remove the candle light is actually to cause that church to go extinct. He's not talking of individuals. He's talking about a church or a denomination that allows the in infiltration of wrong doctrine and don't do something about it. That's what he was talking about. Okay. No, Baba, from Eket, we're heading outside of Akwaibum. We're going south uh, eastwards. This one, Newi, is in a number of states. Hello, Global Baba. I'm Zube. I write from Newi. Please, sir, can you throw more light on Matthew 17, 21 about fasting? Is fasting a requirement for believers under grace? If yes, how does it apply? Thank you so much, Global Baba, for exposing me to the truth of the Bible. Zube from Newi. Well, Zube fasting, it's part of self-discipline. That's what it is, part of self-discipline in the New Testament. That's why there's no chapter or verse on it because it is a personal device to bring discipline and focus for you in times of prayer, in times of study of God's word, and in times of more consecration for the work of ministry. Let's now leave the southeastern part of Nigeria and get to the central, still by road, Abuja, be nice. Hello, Global Baba, and the intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. I'm grateful to God for the things he's doing through you in our generation, dear Global Baba. My question concerns what you said about Jesus being the man that Moses spoke of in Genesis 1. If Jesus is that man, Global Baba, does that mean that Jesus was created? And what does it mean when God said, let us make man in our own image? Who was he referring to as us? Thank you, Iboro Frank in Abuja. Genesis 1, 26, 27 is God's declaration of intent. That God's intent is that out of the Godhead, a man will come forth who will save men. That's why in the New Testament, Jesus is called the image of the invisible God. So Jesus was God's intent for the salvation of man because God knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. So Genesis 1, 26 and 27 was God's declaration of his intent where redemption of mankind is concerned. Let's now, outside of Abuja, still by road, go to next door, Mina, Niger State. Hello, Global Baba and the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. Someone gave me this question to ask you, Global Baba. The writer of Hebrews spoke about rest in Hebrews 3 and 4, in which he explained that if the people of old had entered, there wouldn't have been another day of rest promised. Christ is that rest, but he said in Hebrews 3, 12 and 13, 4 and 11, we should labor to enter into that rest. What did he mean by that, Global Baba? Eternally saved Nicholas from Power City, Mina Campus. Well, laboring to enter the rest simply means acknowledging what you have already so you can enjoy the rest that you're already in in Christ. 
I'm heading out of Mina. I'm still going northwards. And this one from some anonymous location for the road. Hello, Global Baba. My name is Moses Kajani Firi. I have a problem of masturbation. I've tried to pray and fast, but to no avail. I need guidance and direction. Please help me. Well, we'll, well you, you need to spend more time in the world. What I was teaching tonight, where you focus your eyes will, de will, will, will determine the image that you get out of it. So if you focus on Christ, focus on the word, as you begin to focus and feed on Christ, you will discover that your appetite for masturbation suddenly withers and dries up. So set your affections on Christ. Spend more time in the world and keep following our teachings. As the counselor is heading to Adamawa State, somewhere in northern Nigeria, first though, this caller. Hello. Hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Kimitani from Malawi. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, so, thank you so much uh, for for giving us through all this time. Uh, trust me, we teaching and tell me a lot. And the way I knew you, you know, through uh, a friend when I was sick. So through this message is where I got my healing, my total healing. I was totally sick, and this is the job that we have find the the solution to help you and go through your teaching where I got here. But I just wanted to put uh, one question pertaining um getting your teaching and using them for healing. Basically what I wanted to do is that sometimes I get a clip that in their clay and I use it when I get it and I get you. So, is it advisable to be doing that or then I can pray along or just give it to me? So, but I didn't hear a thing. About that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't also hear a thing. You know, I just hear teaching, teaching. But I didn't hear beyond that. Maybe the producer has... And Pastor Matthew has a gift of... Um, oh, Pastor Matthew. <laughs> ...understanding some of those things. Pastor Matthew, <laughs> did you hear what he said? Okay. Names of. When he's praying, if he should pray out loud. Well, it's your choice. You can pray out loud. You can pray on your inside. You know, but even if you pray on your inside, sometimes you can't control it. You just find yourself shouting out because it's a spirit thing. Yeah. You know, and so we're glad to, to, to know that you've been healed. Keep following the teachings and pray. Whether loud or quiet, what is important is that you're praying. Amen. And pray without ceasing. Yeah, but Global I remember that, that question happening, I think, very early in the life of Ask the Counselor. And uh, someone asking you, are you narrating that even when Mama, for instance, is sleeping, uh, you can pray without waking up Mama? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. without shouting. You can pray quietly. You can pray, you know, just quietly. It's not the shout that makes God answer your prayer. Is the fact that you're in Christ. So whether quiet or loud, God answers. Even when you meditate, God answers. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So even when you're thinking, God is answering. Okay, we're supposed to be in Adamawa now. Yes, thank you. We're supposed to be in Adamawa state now, Global Baba. What about Philippians 4.15 concerning giving and receiving? Makalang Akila, right from Adamawa state. That's Brother Paul's prayer for the church at Ephesus, uh, the church in in, you know, uh, in Philippi, who give to him. And he says, my God supplies. So it's a pastor's wish and a pastor's desire for people who give to him that they will make more money, that needs will be met among the brethren, that God will steer up brethren to meet the needs of brethren because the riches in glory is in brethren. So God will steer up brethren to be generous towards one another so that people's needs are met within the house by brethren in the house. A longish road trip on the program, this edition, now terminates at Cameroon. Ndino na glory writes, greetings Global Baba, I write from Cameroon, please hide my identity. Well, I'm going to now say, I only saw that after I already 
put out that name, so I'll keep that for another day. How do you now tell us your name and then ask me to hide it? Okay, but so from Cameroon, Lobo, but let's go quickly, quickly to Tanzania. This one. My name is Joshua Ibrahim. I arrived from Tanzania. My dear mentor, dear Global Baba, Grace changed my attitude, and now I'm very new since I started listening to you. I want to tell you thank you. Oh, thank That's you. That's all the way from Tanzania. Thank you from Tanzania. Keep following. Okay, so um, I'm going to round off this edition of the program. Well, not round off, but I have this entry now from South Africa, no, Zambia. Hello, Global Baba. You have been a blessing to me ever since I started listening to you. You are a blessing to our generation. I live in Zambia. I have a question. When Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Now, the bridegroom lives in us, and he said somewhere that he will never leave us. Are we supposed to fast as Christians? Regards, Frederick Mutoya in Zambia. Well, you're not fasting for Jesus to stay in you or to come on you. You're fasting so that you are, you discipline yourself for, to pray some more. You discipline yourself to observe certain things. You discipline yourself in a place of consecration to be effective in ministry. That's why you fast. Not so that Jesus will not leave you. Whether you fast or not, he's in you and with you always. But fasting now is self-discipline to help you fulfill the ministry that you have, the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the world. I am Mbugwa Joyce, Global Baba. I am born again. Dr. Bush, hello. Global Baba, hello. My other question is, my sister is dead and her husband wants to bring dowry to my brothers who are our guardians for our parents are dead. Can they take dowry if someone who is dead? And the Bible says, till death separate us. And now my sister has been separated by death. Two, how is, tra how is traditional dowry conducted? If my husband says he wants to slaughter a goat, as our culture is, the goat is slaughtered to mean you are with him. Another one, as traditional marriage, you, uh, you cut the shoulder of the goat. Should we do all this? <laughs> marriage is cultural. Absolutely. <laughs> marriage is cultural. So if that's what your culture demands, to cut a goat, cut the goat. There's nothing bad in cutting a goat or whatever, you know. Yeah, marriage is cultural. And if your sister, uh, sister is dead, yeah, the family wants to return the dowry, by all means, your family is free to receive the dowry because there's no more marriage after death. Okay. All right, Global Baba, let's go to South Africa. Looks like that will be where we we'll spend the night, but here is South Africa. I write from... South Africa, Global Baba, want to remain anonymous. I write to thank God for his gift in you to bring revelation knowledge to the blue marble planet. I have a question after following the law and the prophet. If in Old Testament, prophet prophesied about the death, resurrection, and glorification of Jesus, then what would the prophet of New Testament prophesy about? And um, apart from a defying believers through those who prophesy Concerning material possessions, uh, no, 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 I'm just wondering. Okay, apart from a defined believers through the written word, how can they exercise that gift in the church? Are you for or against those who prophesy about material possessions and battles that Christians face in life, like saying the cause of your problem is this or that? Your response will be much appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Bush, for the good work. Well, again, the gifts of the Spirit must be well explained. A prophet in the New Testament is different from a prophet in the Old Testament. And I don't have the time now to break all of that down. I will recommend for you my book, Every Man a Minister and the Follow-Up um, um, uh, Gift and Callings of God. If you get those two books and read them very well, you will understand the functionality of a prophet in the New Testament. Global Bible Camp Full Cycle. Tomorrow is another day. Until then, Michael Bush, my name. Pastor I.J. Kwere, my producer, the production team, everybody stands still to invite Global Baba, Dr. Ebel Damina, to do some prayers over prayer requests, then we round off. Let's pray together. Father, we pray for those in need. We pray for those going through challenging times for a divine intervention right now. Amen. Sick bodies be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive the intervention of God and we command the devil to seize in his maneuvers. Amen. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Glory to God. Well, we celebrate Mr. Michael Bush again for being a blessing. And um, 
We want to thank all of you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Don't forget tomorrow, 6 p.m., GMT Plus One will be live on all platforms. And 12 noon, GMT Plus One on Tithe and Titan continues tomorrow. Get more people to follow. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Glory.